Hello everyone, my name is Elmer, Steve Ochaeta. You could call me Elmer, you could call me Steve, you could call me Mr. Ochaeta, whatever is easier for you. My presentation is called IT for Schools. As you can see, I have two lovely kids. My daughter, Stephanie Giselle, holding a book in robots, and Elmer Jacob, working there with his tablet. Today I talk about technology in schools. First, let me talk about the digital revolution in the classroom. In today's classroom, it is very common to see computers introduced. It is very common to see a curriculum in computer science or information technology. But let me allow you to listen to Esther, who is a journalist, an author, an American educator and an expert and she will share in her interview her views about digital revolution in the classroom. She will differentiate between the teaching approach that our students had before and that the students should have now. So let's play that for you now. educational research shows for years that all the learning, 80% of the learning, takes place outside the classroom. So why not just bring the outside into the classroom? So the reason they learn it outside the classroom is because there's interaction. People learn through action. They don't learn passively. Before we had technology and everybody had a phone in their pocket, there were only really a couple of ways to learn something. One was to go to school and sit there and kind of suffer through that and listen and memorize and then try to make that relevant. And the second way was to go to the library and to get a book. So both of these methods were the way that people learn things. But then along came the digital revolution and we all have access to computers and to tablets and to phones. So if you want to learn something today, you can get it on your phone. Uh, you don't have to go to the library, and you don't have to sit in a lecture. But the whole model in education is still based on sitting in a lecture, whether you are in you know, second grade or whether you are in university. Kids love technology. You know, you, it's kind of like a magic pencil. And so, but if you give them the opportunity to explore using technology, then the excitement grows. If you can use the computer or the phone or the tablet as a basis for exploring, then you're going to be excited about it. So, like for example, if you want to learn something and don't know how to do it, you could go to YouTube and find a video. There's, there are videos on everything. What we need to do to encourage more project-based learning is to cut down on the importance of those test results and not to focus just on the test results. So I'm not saying to get rid of the test because nobody wants to get rid of the test. I'm just saying that maybe we shouldn't concentrate on it. Maybe we should use the test as a gauge for like how the student needs to perhaps learn more in a certain area and not evaluate the teacher just on the test. Maybe we should evaluate the teacher on the four C's, which is, do your students know how to communicate? Are they creative? Do they have any critical thinking skills? How about collaboration? Do the kids have any empathy? What about those skills for working in the workplace? What kind of skills are you teaching in that environment, in your classroom? So that's not to say you have to get rid of the lecture. It's just that you want to cut it down. You want to be able to take what you learn in a lecture and use it so it becomes meaningful. And 
So that's why I'm proposing this 20% time in the classroom. So the 20% time would give students 20% of this week to work on a project that employs the things that they learn or the information that they learn and the other 80% of the time. So it makes the learning relevant. Just try it out and see if your kids don't like it. The first, the first few weeks it might look like chaos and you might wonder like what are they doing? But in fact, at the end of a month you would be surprised at how much they have learned. Inspiring the future. If you look at this picture, what do you think? It looks like my classroom, like your classroom, the teacher in the front, the students writing notes. You could see one of the students there is already lying down. Sometimes the students get bored because they're only taking notes, listening to a lecture, while the teacher writes on the whiteboard, on the chalkboard, and the student is expected to do what? To learn from the lecture. How do we do that? We test them. We give them or download information, if I may use some IT terminology, and they're supposed to upload back that information, proving to us what they remember by writing the test. But the fact is that students now don't like lectures. They like, however, to play with technology. And they're very good with that. So let's allow students to have use of technology. I like products that allow us to collaborate, to communicate, and to be creative. And for that, there are many products, but I recommend Office 365 for education, and in particular, I'm going to talk to you about using Microsoft Teams. But let Microsoft do the advertising themselves. So what Microsoft Teams has to offer? Well, file sharing and co-authoring. It allows you to screen share. It allows persistent chat. It allows you to schedule meetings. It allows for audio and video calls. And the good thing about Microsoft Teams is that it is free if you have an account with Office 365. And let me tell you, Office 365 for education, there is a free version, cost zero dollars, unlimited amount of accounts. And also Microsoft Teams, as well as Office 365, is designed with corporate security in mind and retention. So you don't have to worry about the accounts, the applications that are being used. And it's very easy to use. It can run in the web browser. It could run as a mobile application in your Windows phone, in your Windows computer, laptop. It could work as a, an application on your Mac, on your mobile phone, Android. If you have an iPhone, it will work. And like I said, you don't have to pay anything for it. So let me show you now in the demonstration how we can go ahead and use Microsoft Teams